Next question is from Paula Angela. What are your big four supplements? Okay. This is going to be hard for Sal. Yeah. <laughs> narrow, narrow down to four. Can this we make be, it big 20? This could be an hour conversation. No, you know, right? I'll tell you what. So <laughs> here's the criteria that I would say for big four. These are the supplements that most people would benefit from. So that's where I would say that. Oh, because. Okay. Because I could make the argument that if you supplement for your needs, well, then that's the most important, right? Mm -hmm. So if you lack vitamin D, vitamin D is going to be in your big four. If you lack, you know, you know, magnesium, magnesium is in your big four. So I'm going to speak more generally to what most people will benefit from. And one of the number one supplements is going to be creatine. Creatine is beneficial not just for strength and performance. It's also beneficial for health, heart health, brain health mitochondrial health. You're starting to see it now in wellness supplements. You're starting to see now that they're going, they're trying to supplement uh, elderly with creatine because it prevents muscle wasting and improves cognitive function. So creatine has got to be mm -hmm. one of those supplements. And it is. It's one of those supplements I recommend to everybody. Now, I don't recommend the same dose for everybody. I think if you have a lot of muscle mass, you're taking you know closer to five grams a day. If you're my aunt, uh, and you don't really lift weights that much or even work out that much, then I'm telling you to take like one or two grams a day. Uh, but creatine's got to be uh, one of the tops. So any? that's your, well, I have my, I have three right away. So for me, it's uh, a protein powder, creatine, and vitamin D are the, mm. are the three that I most consistently use. And you, you make the point of like, you know, if you're lacking in that, obviously for whoever it is that, but I would make the case that I, what, what I saw, I thought I saw a survey or study on um, the percentage of people that, lack vitamin D, it's over 50%. Yeah, right? it's a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, that's going to be most people, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, supplement, but of course, find out if you are uh, before you take that advice. So uh, vitamin D for me is is a staple every day. Creatine right now, I'm taking uh, every single day. And almost every day, I would say every other day or every couple of days, I'm using uh, whey. Now, that is just because whey or I bounce between that and the, um, the vegan protein. So but that is only because I'm I'm not meal prepping right now, and I'm not getting all my food or all my protein uh, through Whole Foods. When I'm really really good, I actually don't use protein powder that often. But it's just I haven't been prepping like I used to prep. Yeah, you know, to the vitamin D trip off this right. So I've been supplementing with between five to ten thousand I use of vitamin D a day for a while, um, and I also take cod liver oil, which has got a decent amount of vitamin D in mm -hmm. it. I went and got a blood test recently for vitamin D because uh, I had one previously and I think, okay, I want to test my vitamin D levels semi-regularly because I don't want to take too much. It's a fat-soluble vitamin and too much vitamin D is not good for you either. I went and got tested and my vitamin D was at 45, like right in the middle. And I supplement with five to 10,000 every single day. That's yeah, crazy. It just goes to show you. Yeah. Now, and I try to stay active. I try to, but here's the deal. I'm not outside that much. Most people aren't. And I live in California. Right. You live in a cold place. Go get your vitamin D levels tested. Low vitamin D, it's like a hormone. It screws up your hormone levels. Your immune system is shot. It ruins your, your it could cause anxiety, uh, sleep issues, lots of problems. I've had clients who've had just all these health issues, got their vitamin D levels tested, started supplementing with vitamin D, gone. Mm -hmm. All because it's a they huge like one. That's number one for me. Really? I mean, that, is yeah. vitamin D. Vitamin D. I, I've tried with cod liver oil as well, uh, and then uh, you know whey protein and creatine, and then um, let's see, the last one was like a. It was a toss up probably between magnesium and zinc. Oh, for yeah. Can yeah. we count your Cialis or does that not count? As no, that's not that's, a supplement. That's yeah, not that's, considered. Yeah, no, no, that's prescription. It's Viagra is the one that it's uh, essential for him. But, oh, it's essential. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, here's the other one I'll add uh, some kind of an omega 3 fatty acid. So, uh, fish oil. Yeah. I think fish oil has got a lot of value mm -hmm. for the average person um, because our fatty acid intake tends to be pretty, pretty much off. Um, it's got anti-inflammatory pro uh, properties. It helps, uh, you know, thin the blood. Um, it's probably good for you. now. If you eat fish, do you need to take you know regularly? Do you need to take fish oil? Probably not. Do you have? You, do you know by chance? So I used to have a, like a rule for how I would take my fish oil, and that was if I didn't get fish two to three times in the week, I would take fish oil. If I got it two three times in that week, I wouldn't take it. Do you know what about? Do you have any idea of like what? Like I don't know if that's correct. Like if I if if I should be eating fish. Only once a week, and that's plenty to get enough uh, of fish oil in there. Or you know, what's interesting is that when you look at and here's a problem with these studies is they're all you know survey based or whatever. It's hard because they're not controlled, but it seems to be the more fish you eat, the better. So like the the people that eat fish a lot seem to have better health than people who eat fish you know sometimes, and they seem to be better than, than people who eat fish rarely. 
So I would assume that fish oil, uh, regular supplementation is probably a good idea. I can tell a difference when I take it. That's the, one, of the, one of the supplements I take all the time. I take cod liver oil and I take mm. regular fish oil because cod liver oil is not as high in the you know, DHA and EPA. So I take Do you know, both. You know where I can see it more than anything is actually in my dog's. So whenever the dogs start to get skin issues or hair issues, you give them fish oil. I give them fish oil, and within about three days, it clears up. Their coat looks three times wow. richer. Their hair starts to grow back in those places. Hmm. So and it's quick. So I notice it a lot faster than myself. Like for me, it's hard to tell if I'm like, oh, did I do I feel better? Do I notice those things? I don't know so much. It's hard. Yeah, but I could definitely see it in the dogs. Like when I whenever that because I'm not disciplined enough to give it to them all the time. A lot of times I'll notice that I'll start to see something going on with their losing hair or something, and then I'll I'll do that, and then I notice it. Now, what do you do? Do you open the capsule? Yeah, and I pour it on their dog food. Oh, they probably love that. Yeah, because they the smell of fish, right? So yeah. they they won't eat the pill by itself, but if I crack it open and then I pour it all over it, then they'll they'll eat it. By the way, here's a little trick. Some people when they take fish oil, they don't like that. They'll kind of Burp taste up. it afterwards yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Here's yeah. a trick. Very easy. Freeze them. Throw them in the freezer. freezer. Yep, take them frozen mm. in there. You don't get the you don't get that anymore. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And it's probably better I to do it has that. something to do with like lemon or something. I heard like citrus. Helps. Nah, they make some. They make some that yeah. are like lemon. Yeah, they flavor. make the ones. That the, so I have one specifically for the dogs that are supposed to be bacon flavored, but they still smell like fish. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Like, it is a nasty burp, dude. It yeah. is nasty. Yeah. So, but, but you probably and you probably a good idea to freeze them anyway because well, it say, can go bad. Well, I was going to ask you. So if, if you freeze it, then it doesn't change how how it ends up getting digested and then broken up and no. oh. it just it just it just keeps it. You know, longer, I would yes, think. Yeah. yeah, I would think it takes a lot longer. And like again, fish oil, it's a food, so it'll go bad. So if you keep your fish oil in, in your cabinet uh, and yeah. it's like all the time, yeah. here's a test. Take one of your fish oils, poke it with uh, like a pin or something, smell it. If it smells- Rancid. Yes, then your fish oil's bad and you got to buy new ones. I wonder how, how long does it stay yeah. good for then? A decent amount of time, yeah. but but sometimes they'll pa they'll package them and then have them in storage forever, and then you get them shipped to your house, and then yeah, I didn't even thought of that. And it's one of those supplements too that I, it does it stays in my house a lot longer than because I'm not taking it every single day. So, so you refrigerate them or, or freeze them. Okay, it's something you want to do. Oh, cool. And then I agree with you guys on protein. Uh, it, higher protein intake, it, it tends to make people leaner. It helps with appetite. Of course, it helps with muscle building. That's a fact. Um, so I would say protein powder is one of those. And again, and just like you said, Adam, use it when you're not hitting your protein numbers. That, of course, that being said, most people yeah. don't hit those. Well, that's how numbers. I am with all of the, all the only one I'm not is creatine because creatine is really hard to get that additional like three to five, right? Because mm -hmm. I think I forget how many, how much steak. Pounds. You, yeah. Meat. You have to eat pounds of steak to eat, to make the, go over the RDA, I think of like creatine, right? So that's not happening. So creatine, I'm probably the most consistent when I'm lifting mm -hmm. and I'm decided I'm going to take it. But the, even the vitamin D, if we had a week where like, uh, you know, I have trips where I, I'm out on a boat in a lake, like, and I am in the sun for six, seven hours every single day, I'm not taking vitamin D during mm -hmm. that time. Like, so if there's times where I, or if I'm prepping my food and I'm hitting my protein intake, I'm not using my, my whey protein powder yeah. those times. If I have a week where I'm eating mostly fish all week long, I'm not taking it in there. So always the goal is to go after all this stuff through whole foods. But the reality is I would say those are probably, I agree, yeah. the big four. Here's a special most. mention. I'll throw one in just for a special mention is uh, choline. Choline, there's some debate as to whether or not it should be an essential nutrient. A lot of people lack choline. Uh, women in particular benefit from uh, from having some choline, and it helps with brain function and general health. Where do you get choline naturally? Egg yolks are the best uh, mm. source. But if you don't eat those on a regular basis, uh, supplementing with choline could be – and here's a great thing you could do. This is a fun combination. Take some choline with your coffee or your caffeine and throw a little theanine in there, which we talk about all the time. Nice buzz. Mm. You get a great buzz doing that. Mm.